you feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. Bernie said in the GQ article that when he got Ocean's Eleven, Steve had reached out to the producer and said he thought he would be a better fit and tried to get the part and blah, blah, blah. And that was some shit that, you know, you just don't do. Bernie, uh, you know, felt like he didn't want to do it anymore. He was on his own path and Steve. So, uh, you know, nothing like that ever happens or doesn't happen for a reason. Bernie, mm. they had to make him the host. Mm. But Steve Harvey found a way. Even though he wasn't talented, <laughs> he still found a way. In general, when you think about a band of artists, you probably envision a group of people that have each other's best interests at heart. While that may have some truth to it, Steve Harvey's story seems to show us another angle to it, because according to reports, Harvey was hell-bent on kicking Bernie Mac out of his way. This is messed up on so many levels, mostly because they were only supposed to be a pair of professionals chasing joint success, but news that has just hit the media about Harvey alleges that he only cared about himself from the beginning. Even though the world had no idea all of this was happening with the guys behind closed doors, other members of the band have now come out to set the story straight about Mac and Harvey's story, and trust me, it's almost unbelievable. I know I don't have to tell you just how explosive this is, so do yourself a favor and stay tuned. Is it true that Steve and, and, and Bernie butted heads? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they were the kind of guys that they both alpha males. If you were old enough during the early 2000s, there's a pretty good chance you know what the original Kings of Comedy show was all about. If you weren't there at the time, then whatever you think you know about Steve Harvey's story is probably just half the scoop. Steve Harvey, along with three other comedians, cemented their place in the Comedy Hall of Fame in the 2000s when they went on a comedy tour called the original Kings of Comedy. The show not only broke box office records at the time, it also kickstarted what comedy shows have become today. Uh, was that the most successful comedy tour it ever is. at that point? Yes. The other three performers were D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac, all of whom had different styles and also used material based on African-American life in America and black-white differences. Steve was hot. We had the Steve Harvey show, so we had a national TV show. Bernie Mac was the it comedian at the time, and, and then D.L. was hot. He had a TV show. Harvey, at the time, though, was alleged to be the smoothest of the performers, but also the most aggressive toward the audience, picking targets in the front row for comments on their hair, clothes, and career prospects. Bernie Mac, on the other hand, had a different approach, something you could call the most hard-edged, and some of his material ventures away from comedy and into the wounds of real life. First year we did it, it was just me, Bernie, and uh, just me, Bernie, and Steve. Right. And Steve closed. However, it seems Steve Harvey might have been jealous of Bernie Mac's approach, and that small hiccup is what grew into a beef that lasted for years. At least that's what one of the band members seems to have just revealed to the world, and the internet is buzzing about it. Bernie, uh, you know, felt like he didn't want to do it anymore. He was on his own path, and Steve, so, uh, you know, nothing like that ever happens. Or For years, rumors have circulated that during the time of the original Kings of Comedy tour, there was some tension between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac, and now those rumors are being addressed by other members like Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric, who was a part of the tour along with D.L. Hewley, Steve Harvey, and Bernie Mac, confirmed that the two comedians did not see eye to eye. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, they were the kind of guys that they both alpha males, you know, like they both, they just saw it different. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they was able to get through it, he said while on Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay. Cedric added that because of the feud, it had prevented them from doing another tour. I think, of course, that was, you know, definitely a contributing circumstance, but I also think that it had a lot to do with the promoter on the thing because he got a bigger head than all of us. The dude that put us all together started to really think was about him. So it started to be that. So it was a lot of those kinds of elements. Is that one of the reasons why you didn't do, you did it, you did the first, you did the first part, I, the second part? I, I don't think, I think, you know, of course, like that was, you know, definitely a contributing circumstance. In 2003, Mac had an interview with GQ magazine where he accused Harvey of being jealous of him and trying to sabotage him for certain movie roles. Steve would go on to address Mac's claims in a 2010 interview and revealed that he was hurt by Mac's words. Well, fans didn't think Steve was coming clean, and many of them didn't hide how they felt. One person wrote, I never liked Steve Harvey. 
People always addressed how much of a raccoon he's always been, which is a fact. But he also had a superiority complex over other black comedians that he worked with, including Bernie and Cedric, too quiet as it's kept. Another individual who also has the same thoughts about Steve's true personality said, y'all ever heard of the bull? Steve down L all you know he's slime? The real reason they killed Bernie is on the net. Well, a reason other than the official story, gotta dig deep to find it though. We'll never truly know though. Long live Bernie though. Others seem to believe Steve Harvey has always been a terrible person from the beginning, even to the people on his show. One of these people wrote, I really don't think Steve is even that nice of a guy. He gives horrible advice. He's snippy with contestants and audience members, as in early episodes. That's just kind of brushed off as humor, and he has an inflated sense of self. Well, while everyone had an opinion about Steve when his feud with Mac went mainstream, the presenter actually had a different explanation for what had happened between them. Just because, you know, they, you know, they, you know like, y'all would be together if it wasn't for me. Like, okay, bruh. Like, up, nobody, you coming ain't told to one joke. nobody coming to see you during the conversations with ed gordon show which premiered the night before on black entertainment television gordon interviewed harvey and addressed the alleged feud between the two with harvey finally publicly addressing it from his standpoint according to the interview the feud stemmed from the gq interview with mac in which he suggests harvey was not only envious of his success but also tried to steal gigs from him Harvey acknowledged his feelings about the GQ article and admitted his anger about it. I was upset at first because it just wasn't true, said Harvey. Me and Bernie had a lot of good times together and then this article in GQ came out and put all this vicious stuff in there. Harvey also acknowledged that he spoke with Mac about the interview. B said he never said it. I had to take him at his word for it. After Mac's passing, Harvey revealed that his widow, Rhonda McCullough, helped him get beyond the feud. Rhonda, of all people, knows the truth. It was a cleansing moment for me because I was able to let go of a lot of stuff. No one knows what was actually behind the beef. However, Harvey's admission of having a cleansing moment might imply that something was there indeed. Whatever it was, we'll probably never know. From the looks of things, however, Steve has shown that he does regret how the relationship between him and Mac went down the drain, and he's even proven it on air. A while back, Steve Harvey dedicated one of his show's episodes of his daytime talk show to honoring the legacy of the late Bernie Mac, who passed away in 2008 at age 50 due to complications from pneumonia. For the tribute special, Harvey was joined by D.L. Hewley and Cedric the Entertainer for the announcement that November 14th had been formally declared Bernie Mac Day by Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Bernie was a Chicagoan through and through, which is why the city of Chicago sent this over, Harvey said. This is from the city of Chicago. It's actually a proclamation that says, in recognition of Bernie's remarkable life and legacy, Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel has proclaimed today, November 14th, Bernie McDay in Chicago. As members of Mac's family burst into tears at the news, a clearly touched Harvey offered some advice on how to celebrate his friend's life. I urge all Chicagoans to mark this occasion just as Bernie would have, Harvey continued, with thanksgiving for both our trials and triumphs and finding the humor no matter what. It's Bernie McDay today. Mike Epps, who joined the tribute via satellite, also announced that Max Chicago alma mater would be renaming its auditorium in his honor. Every night before we went out on stage on the King Tour, Bernie used to pat us all. Bernie was athletic dude so he used to pat us on the rear and like basketball players but mac whose underrated sitcom the bernie mac show scored the comedian multiple emmy nominations had long battled the inflammatory lung disease known as sarcoidosis shortly before mac's death the bernie mac foundation was established to push for a more thorough understanding of sarcoidosis by supporting research but even with all of these details that have come out about Steve seemingly feeling bad about how he and Bernie hung things before he passed, many fans haven't bought any of his words. These people have also been on social media, letting the presenter have it. One of them wrote, Yes, this is true, and I've been sour on Steve Harvey ever since. Bernie said this is the one thing that hurt him the most in the business. Out of all the things he'd been through in entertainment, Bernie said this was the worst. Another person added that Mac has always been better than Steve. They wrote, Harvey was always the weak link. That's why he hated the Mac man. He had to practice for weak jokes when Bernie was a natural. He was the least funniest. Looks like it will take a lot more for Steve Harvey to change the public's opinion about him. 
That's it for this video. Goodbye.